All right, panel is out on location. We're at the Steel Toad Brew Pub here on West 2nd in Vancouver. Uh, is it west? Yeah, we're just west of, of Main Street. Main's the cutoff. Yes, we're absolutely. Just, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, we're on the, we're on the, on we're on the hipster side there we of go. Main, okay. just Main make sure Street. That, uh, we know what we're talking about. Uh, nobody seems to know for sure whether Alex Burroughs and Dan Hanhuis will be back. Trevor Linden suggested the other day in his year-end availability he could see a way that both Burroughs and Hanhuis could return to the Vancouver Canucks. We've talked about young players. you got to make room for some of these young guys. But to see any way that either one of those players returns to play for the Canucks next season. Um, well, that's tough. I think Alex Burroughs is gone. I think he knows he's gone. I think it's, and ultimately, I think it, it's kind of the right move. I think he's a guy that would be uh, enjoy his later years in life being on a Montreal team or a really good team on a fourth line, on a third line. A guy that can bump up your lineup when there's injuries. A guy that can perform well in the playoffs. I just, like, he's worked so hard. I mean, he talked about this uh, as he kept getting interviewed again and again and again about whether these were the final days of his career. But he talked about, you know, he wasn't the ECHL and fought his way to the AHL, fought his way from the fourth line to the second line, and now he just has this overwhelming thing that I want to win a cup. Well, that's not going to happen in Vancouver. And as far as hand use goes, um, maybe it's possible. I, I, I really find it hard to believe that, that the Canucks are going to have anywhere near what the best offer is going to be for Dan Hamus. And I think all things being equal, no matter how much he loves this province and how much he loves Hudson Bay Mountain and Smithers <laughs> and all the things up there, he's going to look at it and say, you know what, this is the best thing for me and my family. I believe in his sunset years. Perfect guy uh, on your second pairing. I think the Canucks see him as a guy that probably should be a, a fifth on a third pairing. And really, how can they pay him, Ed, you know, $4 million if they see him on as a third pairing guy? Yeah, well, there's two issues. And I, and I think with both of them, it's the roster spot that's more important or a bigger concern than the money. Um, and again, if you know, if you buy this idea that they are rebuilding and they're, they, I mean, all that you've got. So now you've got Hutt, now you've got Champ, and now you're going to bring. It gets it gets pretty crowded there pretty soon. So now the only thing I'd say about it, if I can contradict myself in record time, that defense was so piss poor last year, and like, and Hamhuis can't help them. So maybe on that basis, you bring him back at something that makes three years, nine million, something like that. If you can get it done, I think that I think that's workable. The, but the left side, so the t top pairing on the left side is going to be Edler. Uh, the second pairing on left side is going to be Ben Hutton. I, I really, I, I'm struggling to find a spot for him. And when, I think the Canucks are going to be reluctant to go into that third year in a deal, just because they're so worried about. You know Horvat and Markstrom and all the the contracts yeah. or that that kind of second bridge contracts that are going to be coming up right about then. Yeah, and I think too. And you talked about you know it becomes a numbers game, and there's no doubt that Dan Hamish can play. And really, it was one of the best stories on this Vancouver Canucks season for a guy who had his face completely yeah. smashed to be able to get the surgery to come back and play some of his best hockey. I mean, I was happy for Dan Hamhuis that he was able to get back in there and complete the season and play the way he did, but. If he doesn't move along, if they somehow bring him back, you're basically returning the same defense that you just pointed out wasn't good enough. And that's not to say that Hamus can't play. I just think optically, you cannot serve that up to the fans and expect to make progress as a group if you return the same yeah. five or six I, I, I main defensemen. I think I have this right. There were two NHL defensemen that scored more goals by themselves than the Canucks group did as a whole. <laughs> and there was 11 guys, right, <laughs> that played defense with the Canucks this year. Total 23 goals. Yeah, it's, um, it, 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 it's an Interesting one. It, it, BC guy took a haircut to sign here. Probably take another haircut to re up. Um, kind of a 50 50 one for me. I'm not sure if there's a wrong answer, but I think all things being equal, I think he comes back. And if he doesn't, it makes that whole trade schmozzle look, e trade deadline schmozzle look even worse. And he's such a tough guy to read, too, Bot. I mean, he, you know, even through the, the trade deadline and all that was going on there, I mean, we're trying to pull something out of Dan Hamhuis, but uh, he just doesn't play the game, the no. media game that way. Well, he did He did kind of after, like the day of and then after, yeah. which were really, I thought, two of the best days <laughs> in uh, Dan Hamhuis' career as kind of his public persona, and because he hasn't been invested in that, right? Like, he hasn't, hasn't shown a lot of personality. It's obviously there, because on one day when he was talking about what happened or didn't happen on that trade deadline, he was charismatic, yeah. he was eloquent, 
eloquent, and uh, you know, I was really interested. And then probably the only time in his whole experience as a Vancouver Canuck, I was really interested in what he had to say. Well, and I think too, you know, for him. The cherry on top was getting training camp to Prince George last year, right? Like they can't, they're not going back there. We don't know where they're going. They like to move training camp around the province, but for a northern BC guy, have you know he was the social convener. We found out he was the tour guy. Like he was it there. That's about as good as it can get. They're so. actually going to play home games in Smithers next year, right? As a well, they've done terrace for Hockeyville, so I think that that probably was about as close as they get. But uh, uh, those are among the issues, obviously. Burroughs and Ham Hughes. Uh, and just a thought on Alex Burroughs as we wrap up. Uh, I mean, the story yeah. tells itself. We know that. But how, how do you think he handled everything that went on here down there? Well, first, first class, which is the way he handled most things in the back half of his career. Once he established himself as an NHLer, I think I've written this before. I mean, it, it really—it's it, almost like a Charles Dickens story when you follow it from a guy who was, you know, who was a third liner in his his overage year in the Quebec League. Who, who played in the East Coast League? Who was going to quit and in, in, enroll in, in, at uh, at uh, at Concordia in, in the phys ed program and battles his way and catches the eye of Craig, ha Craig Heisinger and, and turns into a legitimate 30 goal scorer in the NHL. I don't. Thing. I, I, I struggle to find a parallel. I don't think there is one. The only guy I could think of who came up from the East Coast League and turned into a goal scorer was Dirk Graham, the old Chicago Blackhawk. I'm sure there's a couple more, but but it is such a unique story and it made him such a compelling character. And I think it, it also made the flaws even richer. You know, the hair pulling and the finger biting, because this is a guy who would do anything to stay That's in the right. lineup. And I think that if you're in Vancouver and you watched him and you're around him, you understood those types of things. You understood that, that the passion, uh, the, the competitiveness, and how he had to kind of scrape and claw his way for everything he got. So it made sense to me when those things would happen. Uh, I have a lot of time for Alex Bowles, always will, but I think he's kind of misunderstood outside the Vancouver market. I think that's true, yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. well, if he fades off into the sunset here on the soft season, uh, he'll go as one of the most popular Vancouver Canucks. I think someday he'll be back as a, a Ring of Honor guy. But as I speak of fading off into the sunset, Ed, I think I'm getting uh, the signal that you're, you're order is up. It's uh, time to go eat here at the Steel Oh, it's tone. not time to eat, oh, my order right. is up, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's going to do it for us from the Steel Toad Group Hub here on West Second.